Hi guys, uh, welcome along to the uh, to the new video. So this is part two of um, a two-part video on pH and KH. So I do suggest if you haven't seen the first part, I, I would recommend checking it out. Um, you can check it out here. Um, uh, in that one, I talk about pH. Um, now in this video, I'm going to look at KH. I'm going to talk about KH, um, and then I'm going to talk about including in that we'll talk about how pH and KH interact together um, how you can what's a good level of KH to run at uh, you know and how you can use KH to to help um, control your pH effectively uh, or, or at least keep it in a keep it safe okay so firstly what a, what actually is KH it means carbonate hardness uh, which is a little misleading obviously because carbonate begins with C but the reason it's KH and not CH is that it, it actually comes from a German word carbonat herter um, which, which means carbonate hardness uh, in German um, so yeah KH and, and written like this um, capital K capital H carbonate hardness so essentially it's a measure of how much carbonate you have in your water uh, in our case in our ponds in our pond water and the reason that is important to a coir keeper is that carbonates are, are used in the pond system to effectively mop up acid so so effectively what you've got is in in the pond system you've got living organisms bacterias fish themselves plants algae any living organisms and and living organisms all consume carbonates in order to survive during their natural life cycle on a daily basis they're consuming consuming carbonates in order to survive now as they consume carbonates they all they release carbon dioxide um, that, that is part of the the cycle of life they, they they produce as a waste product a byproduct um, carbon dioxide now carbon dioxide is acidic so left to its own devices all those organisms continually producing carbon dioxide acid um, your pH will become more and more acidic naturally as over time it will just continuously become more acidic as as the organisms produce and introduce more carbon dioxide so what what the carbonates do as i said it, the carbonates mop up the acid um, and so keeping your ph at a stable level so as those organisms continuously produce an acid carbon dioxide so your carbonates continually mop up that acid and thus your ph remains at a stable level which as we saw in part one um, is vital for for the well-being of your koi and so what happens is if those carbonates run out so basically if your kh comes down down and down as it's been used and you don't replenish it when it gets to zero there's nothing there now to mop up the acid that your organism, living organisms are producing continuously and so the acid is then it's no longer being used up being consumed um, being mopped up and so now the pH starts to come down so as more and more acid is introduced in the form of carbon dioxide by those living organisms so your pH comes down and and without that KH without those carbonates to mop up the acid then the acid will just continue to build 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 become more and more acidic the pH comes down 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 which is more acidic as the pH comes down and eventually you get below around about six um, and all the living organisms in your pond system will die so that's your fish your all your good good bacteria uh, algae plants everything will die and so that is why it is vitally important to keep a level of carbonates in your system and and thus 
hence a level of kh uh, by a means of putting a number on those the level of carbonates that you have available and that's why earlier people say that kh is a buffer to you to your pH and that's how it works basically the carbonates that the, that the KH indicates are present mop up acid which is continuously produced uh, thus your pH your acid or alkaline nature of your pond stays the same once you've no longer got those carbonates uh, present to mop up the acid then the acid is allowed to build and build and build your pH comes down and down and down and that's what people refer to as a pH crash and uh, eventually you know it will it will kill everything in your pond system so what is a good level of kH um, generally around six uh, degrees of kH and uh, you'll see it wrote like this um, six dkH uh, is a reasonably safe level um, if it's a little bit more if it's a little bit less you know it, it's not the end of the world but somewhere around six is a good level and, and just for completeness kh is also written in um, can be written and measured in milligrams per liter 17.8 uh, milligrams per liter is is roughly equal to one degree of carbonate hardness um, so roughly six degrees kh is is just over a hundred milligrams per liter um and 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 milligrams per liter also is equal to parts per million ppm so a hundred ppm a hundred milligrams per liter six degrees all the same thing so as we've seen your carbonate hardness is is constantly being used up it's it's mopping up the acid produced constantly by your fish so the the, the kh is continuously coming down as it's used up um and and thus hence why you need to top it up um measure your tap water kh but generally tap water contains carbonates and and is a good source of carbonates so adding fresh water in the form of a trickle in trickle out and again there's a video um, about this here um, is, a, is a good way to constantly keep your, your KH topped up water changes um, same thing as a trickle in trickle out just a just a, a sort of a bulk change of water as opposed to a slow trickle in trickle out but it's the same thing it keeps up tops up the carbonates in your water in your pond system and keeps that buffer there and in terms of, I won't go into the, the numbers in too much detail, but in terms of how much carbonate you need to, to put in there, um, one kilogram of koi food that you, you know, every one kilogram that you feed to your koi uh, requires 288 grams of carbonate to uh, effectively buffer uh, you know effectively mop up the acid produced during the consumption of that food so you can see it is quite a lot now generally in harder water areas your tap water does contain a good level of carbonate and and just just topping up with tap water you know doing the water changes doing the trickling out is sufficient to to keep the carbonates topped up to a suitable level but if you live in a soft water area um, you can sometimes find you short of carbonates in your tap water and so you have to, to um, go a little bit further in that you have to add those carbonates yourself and, and as we saw with the pH um, sodium bicarbonate is um, an excellent source of carbonates uh, a, an excellent safe way of adding that, that carbonate to your water uh, if you're not able to get it get sufficient from your your tap water supply uh, and and sodium bicarbonate contains around 70 percent carbonate so if you were to add 100 milligrams of sodium bicarbonate you would effectively be putting in 70 milligrams of carbonates uh, so you can start to see that one kilogram of koi food requires 288 milligrams of carbonates you can kind of start to see the levels of 
um, sodium bicarbonate you may need to add to, to provide you that carbonate level to give you the buffer um, to protect your pH. Um, but in terms of a single sort of dose, if you like, of, of sodium bicarbonate to, to reintroduce carbonates, 100 grams of sodium bicarbonate per for every thousand gallons of water in your pond is, is a good a good level to dose um, in a 24 hour period and then you know the following day retest and and make a second uh, a second move if need be but you'll you'll find if you're in a soft water area and you need to top up the carbonates yourself manually with sodium bicarbonate you'll quickly get into a a routine you'll you'll quickly know how much you need to add and how often in order to, to maintain that level and and as with pH you know you are, you are impacting the pH as well so it is wise to to make small moves um, give it time and then retest and make another small move because you, you know your pH your koi do need to adjust to it and it does take time so the the, the smaller the, the changes the more gradual the better on your fish okay um, that's it for KH so as always please if you enjoyed the video do check out some of the other videos please leave a comment below good or bad I'm always interested to hear what people think of the videos and of what I'm saying I uh, always answer comments um, if you like the video give it a like and as, if you like the channel if you do, do also hit the subscribe button um, hit the notifications icon um, so that you don't miss out on any of the new videos there's there's plenty more coming um, and and until the next video as always take care and stay safe